Hi, my name is Oluwase Gwajai and today we will be looking at a very different conversation. Well, the US elections is coming in a matter of days and we've been having jabs from the Democrats to the Republicans, Republicans back to Democrats. But the big question on everyone's mind is who actually will win the election? Well, you need 270 electoral college votes to actually win the presidential election and in the case where there is a tie and no one is able to get the 270 electoral college votes it goes to the house for them to actually you know vote for cast their votes to choose who will be the next leader of the united states now having done all of those background what are some of the reasons why you think a kamala harris who could not win the primaries in 2019 2020 for the democrats party looks to at least be able to push maybe to win the election as the next and the first female president of the united states well number one is the love-hate relationship that many americans have for donald trump you could say that is the most controversial president that america has ever had you could say that there's a president in america who possibly had no political history and all of a sudden became president you could also say that is the president whom he seemed like the bad guy no, so but let's come down to the elections and let's analyze why we think that either parties could actually win this year's election of course for the democrats they have a very strong blue wall in california where they have about 54 electoral college votes waiting for them it's almost like a sure banker every single year they would like to get california and of course, if you if you flip to the to the Democrat to the Republicans, you discover that they also have Florida, which provides about I think 32 electoral college votes, and more or less like a starting point for both things. And then there are several states that you expect to either show blue or show red. But there are some seven states where we in this year's election that are looking like key battle key battle states, of course. You can talk about Pennsylvania, which has the highest number of electoral college votes in those um, key battle states. It has 19. So almost likely that whoever that wins Pennsylvania wins the elections. You have Wisconsin. You have, um, you, of course, you have Michigan and a couple of them also. Like, you know these ones. You could either flip them blue or you could flip them red. And please take note that blue means Democrats, red for Republicans. Of course. If you look at the case of Kamala Harris, which we have defined before in our previous video, her path to victory is the fact that she has sold so much with the young population, she has sold so much with African Americans, she has sold so much with the women in the setup of America. Because when you flip to Donald Trump, which will be our bigger focus today, you has got that while many young women are interested in matters like abortion, which the Democrats are speaking highly about, you discover that the young men are more interested in the economy, which Kamala Harris happens to appear weak or weaker in. So Trump looks like a more experienced president in terms of handling the economy than Kamala Harris. So while it comes down to interest, what 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 matters the most to voters? For young women, like I mentioned, abortion, the ability to be able to control their body, where they can actually go ahead and enjoy the pleasures of sex and still be able to define whether they want to keep the baby or they don't want to keep the baby. Of course, for many reasons. Some could come in the, in the context of there was a rape. Some could come in several contexts. There are several things that actually happen that sinks to a woman's head to make her think that possibly abortion is the way to go. So for many young women in America, especially for a free world like America, abortion looks like a high topic priority. However, when you flip on the other side, you discover that many of the young men are finding it very difficult to pay for college, they're finding it very difficult to to raise a family they're finding it very difficult to you know to keep up as a man in the house and so because of that the economy pays closer look to them and that's why you discover that in joe biden's um student loan forgiveness policy it favored more of the younger women than the younger men why because many of the younger men didn't even bother going to school they didn't bother going to college or some of them who went to college were trying to work they were trying to do their jobs to use it to fund their college program whereas to discover for the younger women they were able to just you know take up loans and to just try and fund college and we discovered that the loan forgiveness paid more to the younger women who had actually taken up those loans 
who are taking advantage of the student loans and then were defaulting maybe because of one thing or the other and so the forgiveness came into he boosts he solidifies that place for the democrats of course also judging by the fact that the leading figure for the democrats which is kamala harris happens to be female then also when you take a second condition you will discover about the american millionaires or billionaires as you will call it so how do you want to run a country for the democrats an average democrat believes that running the country by making everybody every single small running the country from the middle where you share resources across so in typical fashion of what joe biden said in his debates before he stepped down was that it's better to tax the billionaires they are the guys with the big money let's tax them more let's collect more money from them so if we collect more money from the billionaires in the in the millions in possibly the billions of dollars you can use that money to invest more in health care to invest more in education which sounds reasonable but then when you look at the side of the donald trump and the republicans they're looking at no let us have tax cuts for the business owners if we have tax cuts for the business owners because they are paying lesser tax they could possibly earn more money and because they are earning more money they will open up more jobs so depending on whichever side that you are like i mentioned the younger men will see it as an opportunity of getting more jobs getting better jobs because of course america needs better jobs especially to keep up with their 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 they are very they are very 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 enviable population so when you look at it it now comes down to who is the billionaires back and of course the billionaires we back from because he's going to be presenting them with tax cuts which means that they have more money in their pockets and which means that they will be able to do more with the money in their pocket of course if we flip to the other side of democrats you discover that they want the money to be gotten from the rich and shared evenly for the pure for the poor of course he also speaks to when kamala harris was saying in 2020 when she was trying to run a primary campaign and the reason why she stepped down was because she said I'm not a rich person and that because she's not a rich person she cannot she's not able to continue to fund her campaign of course campaigns in the u.s is usually not funded by one man who really wants to pop out whatever no persons tend to gather together to fund a person's campaign of course judging by the financial muscle that the different candidates have could make them pull in more campaign funds so and then when you look at the the third one of the third key things is that while the democrats policies like i mentioned affect loan affect them education the republican focus more on the economy and um, there have been some flip-flops for example the case of migration because we know that trump is anti-migration so persons coming through the mexico border he wants them stop he doesn't want he feels that the country has saturated with too many too many migration issues and if you take a peek towards europe you discover that the uk too also voted in a labor party because of the migration chiefly because of migration issues when you look at germany also germany's far right far right party also won some election votes at least they were they are looking at how to form a government because it's a more or less like a parliamentary system and you can see that the same front burner issue is about migration because in the last two years three years since possibly covid broke out there has been a lot of migration to the western countries where persons from other countries perhaps african countries asian countries south africa south american countries have moved to the west in seeking for basically for better life so depending on which of the sides and depending on the turnout of the election we can expect a fiercely tight election between kamala harris and donald trump if you ask me who is going to win the election it could be anyone thank you very much for sticking with us in this video please follow us even as we're giving highlights and see and results as regards the u.s elections of course november 5th is the date and um yeah talk to you later bye for now